Please be seated. I wasn't sure if Matthew wasn't going to bust out into Zacchaeus was a wee little man. <laughs> I've heard that song all week. It's been running through my brain. Um, here we are with Zacchaeus. And what a combination of things to engage this week, right? Death and stewardship, right? <laughs> Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector called a sinner by the people because he was a tax collector. That would be something like, his version of tax collecting would be something like if we bought from the city of Atlanta the right to set up a toll booth on Peachtree and Pine and also at Cortland and Pine. I know, right, it's a good idea. We decide that we will charge people $5 to pass on foot, on a scooter, on a bike, in your car. And maybe $10 if there's a show at the Fox Theater and maybe 25 when we had a stained glass window in urgent need of repair. Anybody who needed to urgently use these streets or who went the far way around every day to avoid our toll might have an opinion about us. And that's essentially who Zacchaeus was. Tax collectors were all sort of like that at that time. Rome gave local people the right to charge a tax for certain things, and they might even pay for that privilege but they could take of you whatever they decided and had the weight of the law on their side. Who are you gonna tell if you didn't like Zacchaeus? So you heard Zacchaeus say today, if I have defrauded anyone, and you know he had, by definition, that's what he did for a living, it says, I will pay back four times as much. I will make more than restitution, more like reparation that comes from the law of Moses. Half of my possessions, he says, I will give to the poor. Zacchaeus is rich, it says, so that would be a big deal. This Zacchaeus had decided that he wants to see Jesus. It's not clear that any of this would have happened if he hadn't seen Jesus. It's not clear that he intends to encounter Jesus, but he has climbed up into a tree, it says, to see him because the crowds are so dense. Jesus looks up, sees him and calls him down by his name. And Jesus invites himself and his friends to Zacchaeus' house. That's the story. And the people grumble. Why would Jesus eat with a sinner? The way a tax collector made their money was the sin, to be clear, that was the sin to exploit the people. Jesus, their hero, not so many verses ago in Luke, He's healing and feeding, telling the gripping story of the overturning of injustice, has deeply disappointed them in this move. They're grumbling. But Jesus was interesting to Zacchaeus, and our Jesus was interested in Zacchaeus. Some translators say that where the text says that Zacchaeus was short, it could be translated as young, and that's actually how that word is translated in other stories, but that Zacchaeus was a young rich man, one, doesn't make it clear why he can't see, but also would make a little more sense that he could climb a tree, and also might mean that he inherited his wealth. What another level or layer to this story. In the book of Luke, we have a beautifully constructed story all the way through. One of the beautiful pieces that you see is that you can take the song of Mary at the beginning and literally see it play throughout Jesus' life. I reference it often because I find it so striking. It's like a lullaby full of foretelling of what Jesus' life would include. Remember the lowly raised up and the powerful brought down? Well, here it is. Ched Myers, the Bible scholar, reminds us that this story comes not too far after the story of the blind man who Jesus literally raises up and grants sight. He wished to see. And today we have Zacchaeus who climbs up, it says wishing to see Jesus, and Jesus calls him down. Isn't it interesting? Myers slows both stories down and notes that both men are caught up in Jesus' attention. He stops and looks at them. He notices them in response to their desire to see him, and they are changed in different ways, but they are changed. Like this whole church sits in the gaze of the good shepherd. So be careful out there. The beggar's response is to see. He can see. It is miraculous. 
the kingdom of God, God's justice has come, an awesome, terrifying miracle. Who is this man with such power? Who uses it for a blind beggar? Today, the man who wishes to see Jesus climbs up as high as he can to get a view into those passing crowds of this famous teacher and healer. Zacchaeus is given both vision and power to enact God's justice now. Can you imagine, in our time, the wealthiest among us, no names will be mentioned, understanding the money they are legally entitled to by the law as a tool for doing right, making the world more fair for those from whom they are legally entitled to take money? Can you imagine that gift of vision, of kingdom vision, landing upon us today? We don't know why Zacchaeus was curious. The whole key to the story might be there. Had he heard that Matthew, the not quite chief tax collector, was following Jesus? Did he feel so powerful that he was not afraid to be curious? Had he heard a scroll read that week that had been playing in his mind like a pop song? Did his parents sing him an old song of the freedom and dignity of his people? We don't get that part. But today I will suggest that your prayer for yourself this week might be something about asking for curiosity to go to those places where you might not like the answer that cause you to question the assumptions of what must be in this world that we live in. Don't we all need some heart and mind opening prayer in these frightening times? What would it be like if we saw through eyes that Jesus had granted vision? If we sat at a table haunted by the memory of Jesus and his friends on their way to Jerusalem that last time? In this story, Jesus is in Jericho, right on the border, even today. I was there once because we went from Jordan to Israel, and Jericho is right at that border by the Allenby Bridge. A tourist town now, a Palestinian town, locked down when we were there. We were the first tour group that they had let in in a long time, and we watched the town literally wake up as our bus pulled in to sell us meals and trinkets, these were people utterly dependent on who was let into their town to spend money and who could leave to earn it. Zacchaeus was a decision maker like that. But like the judge in the earlier story of the persistent widow, it seems he had no care for justice, but was clever in ensuring his wealth and that of his family. The gospels are full of characters like that. Jesus seeks them out, it seems, and tells stories about them. He tells a lot of stories about money and its power in our lives. We are seeing very clearly what money can do right now, billions of dollars worth, played with in the marketplace of ideas, most dangerously making us feel powerless as a shocking level of violence in our schools and grocery stores and now the homes of our politicians. A shocking level of violence, usually with guns, is a part of our day to day. What must be like those taxes folks paid, knowing it was all made up and Zacchaeus' people just got rich from it? And it appears that things have been this way in the past. Oh, to have a Jesus to lay eyes upon the lowly and the haughty, to heal them, to heal us. While we all do the best we can to speak into the realities of the world we live in today, and we must, we here start with a curiosity about who Jesus is, I wonder which way you will feel his stretched out arm and voice calling your name, whether it raises you up or lowers you. Where do you hear it coming from? It's what we get to do here. We get to listen together. Zacchaeus, you come down, is how the song goes, for I'm going to your house today. You know that house was never the same again, and they were never the same. You know that man who used to be blind ate that day? and probably a woman who heard her own story in that widow's story, and fishermen, and that guy with the demons. Some of the good china got cracked, and maybe a silver spoon or two went missing. Zacchaeus had so many. And he said he was gonna make things right, right? So I bet some people helped to make sure he shared as well as he could that day. What a mess it must have been. The next story in Luke is about money too, though I don't think it makes it to our lectionary. Money moving in the systems of power in this world, like the media or the military today, it's a raw, valueless, neutral power, 
And Jesus, is warn, Jesus warns his followers to be aware and to act wisely. We in this part of the world almost always are like Zacchaeus. We have heard of this good teacher, but the risk is what he would want of us. Will it be more than we want to give up? So let's be curious. Use your power to do good. Use your power to work for what is right. The poet T.S. Eliot wrote that God's time is not like history's time. If we look only to what can be understood or done in history, we miss out on what is possible. We get too practical, he thinks, too resigned, too comfortable to what is. So may your heart be caught up in God's goodness, God's kairos time, that time that lives in Mary's song and prophesies the healing of the whole world through the incarnation of the Son of God, God with us, inviting all kinds to this table, the community that we build here together.